my name is Annie. Welcome to my channel, Eat, Drink, and Be Reading. And today we're doing another book and wine pairing. And today it's Chardonnay, specifically Nyer's Chardonnay. Okay, it's been a bit since we've done a pairing video and so I'm gonna do that before summer runs out I'm gonna do this white and you can drink white wine all throughout the year particularly if you're eating some fish or some chicken I highly recommend white um, for those even if you don't think you're a white wine drinker but this is one of my favorite white so I wanted to get it done while it was still hot outside at least it is here where I am in North Carolina and this is a Chardonnay it's probably one of the most popular wines, possibly the most popular white wine. And, and I'm not a big Chardonnay fan. It's too buttery and oaky for me, but the Nyers is very different. It is, um, let's see, it is uh, fermented. That was the word I was looking for in stainless steel instead of an oak. And so it kind of loses that oaky buttery flavor, which makes me like it, but it's also, so it's this kind of refreshing and enjoyable, easy to drink drink, except that it is, it has like a bit of a bite to it. And it's, while it's refreshing, it's also, what's the, like it definitely has more of a bite and it is maybe a little more dense, not totally dense, but just a little more dense than you'd expect something that is so refreshing. So that's what we're going to talk about today in books and which books I would read while drinking a Nyer Chardonnay. All right. Book number one is Garlic and Sapphires by Ruth Reichel. I will admit this is the very first book I thought of when I was thinking about doing this Chardonnay. I just love this book. It is a food memoir. When she, she Ruth Reichel wrote it about her time as a food columnist for the New York Times. And it is this joyful ode to food and to New York City, but it does not shy away from issues in the New York City restaurant industry or even the issues of being this well-known food columnist. What does it look like to walk into a restaurant not as a normal person but as a food columnist? And how are you treated different? And how are people who have more money treated differently than people who have less when they walk into these restaurants? It's fascinating. It's fun. She is snarky. She writes with a bit of bite. Yet it is a very easy to digest and fun memoir. Number two is Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Buxbaum. This is a young adult contemporary. It, I think, is Julie Buxbaum's most recent. If it's not, then I need to get the most recent because I love Julie Buxbaum, my favorite young adult author right now. And it's just a story of Abby. She's a 16, almost 17 year old. She lives, I think, in New Jersey, but in a city right around New York City where like a lot of commuters um, to the city and it this particular city lost a lot of people during um, the uh, attacks in the World Trade Centers on September 11th and it I don't know if this is a true real city or not and this is true I want to say at least in the book it is like the city that lost the most people but I could be wrong and when Abby is a baby or like a one year, I think when she's turning one, there's a picture of her taken on her birthday. They're in New York City and they take the picture right as the World Trade Center collapses behind her. And so there's this picture of this smiling baby with like a crown and a balloon and then a collapsing tower. And she became known as Baby Hope. This picture went viral, whatever viral would have been in 2011 or 2001. Um, and she just wants to not be baby hope for a while. And so she takes a job as a camp counselor in a neighboring city, not the city she grew up in. Um, and when she's there, there's a boy there named Noah and he is for his own reasons researching this picture of baby hope. 
and realizes who Abby is and finds a way to get to know her and to convince her to kind of do some research on this picture. Friendship, maybe more happens. What happens when she realizes what he's intending to do, what he's trying to do and just, it was a fun like romance of a like young adult romance, contemporary romance, easy to read, but it deals with what is it like the aftermath of the terrorist attacks it deals with loss of people close to you and it deals with having something stuck to your identity that you did not choose to put there. So in that way, it is a little more dense despite being light. And the writing, like there's jokes and there's wit um, in a way that is almost biting at certain points while still being just totally enjoyable. All right. Book number three is The Dry by Jane Harper. This is a mystery. It's the first, I think, in a series that she does. Um, takes place in a farming community in Australia. There's a federal police officer who's from this community who comes back for a funeral of a friend. And while he's there, discovers that some deaths in the community may not have been as natural as everyone thinks. And he is researching that. This book, it's called The Dry, it envelops you in this community and in the like this drought that is happening. And so it is hot and you as you're reading, you feel like you're like thirsty and like parched and dry because of just the descriptions and the way it's written. And so for that reason, I'm like, yep, a white wine, you're parched, perfect, you're hot, drink something cold. And um, but beyond just being a mystery, it does talk about friendship and family and leaving behind some community, starting over. Um, again, it goes beyond just a who done it. Book number four is Hello Universe by Erin Entrada Kelly. This is a middle grade novel. It won the 2018 Newbery Medal. In this story, there is this bully who plays a prank on another kid. His name is the, the kid who gets the prank played on him is Virgil and he ends up trapping Virgil and his pet guinea pig at the bottom of a well. Um, and then there's these three other characters. There's Valencia who is this deaf girl and she is lonely, but she loves nature and knows so much about nature. There is Kaori Kaori. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. She's this like self-proclaimed psychic. And then you have Jen, who is Kaori's sister. And the three of them kind of get thrust together. They're not friends, but for their, all their own reasons, end up on search to find Virgil when they realize that he is missing. And so you get Virgil in this well, these three really interesting and thoughtful and well thought out middle grade characters. You get some diversity with them. Um, and it's just, it's a joy. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite middle grades, but it really is a joy. It puts a smile on your face. It's very simple and quick and easy to digest. But again, you're talking about bullying and diversity and loneliness. And so it's the sweet middle grade that also tackles deeper, denser, bitier, weightier topics. And last but not least, number five is Young Jane Young by Gabrielle Zevin. This is the story of Rachel and, and she in college has an affair with a congressman in Thurm, Florida. And eventually she has to leave town because this news comes out and of course he gets off scot-free she ends up having to leave town and it kind of plays on what is her life like years later what is how's the congressman's wife how does she feel what does she do to protect her husband who is this little girl ruby and how does she fit into all of this what secrets of rachel's might come out in this new community where she's built her life these past 10 years or so. It, this is a weighty topic and it's talking about 
the power that men have and the lack of which that women often have. And it's talking about keeping secrets and it's just this really weighty, heavy stuff, but it is a surprisingly light and easy to read work. And so for those reasons, I recommend reading those books with the Nair Chardonnay. If you don't like Chardonnay, I'd recommend you try something like, even if it's not Nair's, try a Chardonnay that is um, fermented in stainless steel instead of oak. It might give you a whole nother feeling of Chardonnay. It will be lighter, um, yet not nearly as heavy, and it might surprise you to have something more complicated than your typical typical Chardonnay, which is what I think a lot of these books on the list do. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Um, comment down below, comment about Chardonnay. Do you like it? Do you not? Have you read any of these books? What are some light, lighter reads with maybe denser topics or bitier uh, commentary and dialogue that you enjoy. Let's talk down below. Like and subscribe. Um, I love doing this. I love talking with y'all. So let's do it. Bye y'all.